everybody, E here. Welcome back to another retro book review. Today we are back on the Dean Koontz train with The Voice of the Night, which oddly enough is always uh, talked about as The Voice in the Night, but it's not. It's The Voice of the Night. You can see uh, comments in YouTube videos. You can see even in some reviews. Everybody always thinks it's called uh, The Voice in the Night, but it is The Voice of the Night. Um, this is a story of two young boys, uh, Colin and Ray, and two of probably Koontz's most memorable characters, uh, other than Odd Thomas, um, Christopher Snow, you know, those people. Uh, what Koontz does in this book um, is a rarity. Uh, I, I know I harp on this a lot, but that was a loud vehicle. I know I harp on this a lot, but... Uh, the, the characters feel real and believable. Growing up, I was more along the lines of Colin's character, and I had a friend that was more along the line of Roy's character. In fact, I used um, these two characters. I, I used the build for my uh, my debut novel, Bay's End. I used the build of this one and Layman's uh, Traveling Vampire Show for basically the uh, the the trio of kids. There's two boys and a girl. There's two boys in this one for the majority of the book and then a, I think it's a little, she's a little bit older. She's, uh, she's the, the target of one of the boys and then the other boy ends up falling in love with her. And it, with the Traveling Vampire show, it's more two friends and their gal pal, but then one of them ends up falling for the girl and the other one is just the the cussy you know one so if you if you read my book Bazin you you will see you you can't help but to see the inspirations there uh, this one more is more along the lines of the the good seed bad seed kind of deal one of the boys is a, a good kid one of the boys is a pure terror and they form an unlikely friendship it's another one of those, uh, you know, a jock and nerd kind of deals, uh, like the movie Lucas. That's one of my favorite movies. Uh, with, uh, I, it's Charlie Sheen, um, who is it? Who else is it? Charlie Sheen and, uh, who plays Lucas? Is it Corey Haim? It's Corey Haim, right? It's not Corey Feldman. Anyways, love, love that movie. And the, the girl's name in the movie, I, I can't remember. But I love that dynamic with there's a jock and there's a nerd and they're friends. Uh, I, what I especially like about this one is that turns that relationship on its head and it ends up where the, the boys, you know, end up, you know, coming at each other at some point and no longer being friends. That's one of my favorite parts is to watch the decline in the friendship because one of the boys is just fucking crazy. Uh, what the most brilliant scene I think in this book it happens in a junkyard. I'm not going to be doing a uh, uh, spoiler section at the end of this video, and the main reason for that is with these retro reviews, I try to go off the top of my dome. I don't really remember too much that happens in this book. It's one of those Koontz books that the the plot is kind of. I know what happens at the beginning. I know what happens at the end. I remember the junkyard scene, which isn't the end. I think it's about the middle area of the book, but I remember those those key moments. I don't really remember anything else. I do know that uh, that the character of Colin uh, is reminded me so much of uh, Mark Petrie from Salem's Lot. He collects the the, uh, the old monster figures, uh, the models that you have to put together yourself, collected the, the old monster comic books, that, that kind of thing. is the same type of character. And I'm, I honestly don't know, I, I'm pretty sure King's book came first this time. We'll, we'll discuss that, that more. What, what I mean by that is, there's some stuff that I firmly believe that Koontz inspired King, and there's some stuff that I firmly believe that King inspired Koontz. Those two went back and forth. For a while, they even blurbed each other's books, and then that, at some point in time, that stopped. Um, I'm going to start doing some research pretty soon to figure out when that stopped. Uh, but anyways, back to this book. Uh, the the relationship between the boys is fantastic up until the point where there's a split, and the one boy figures out that the other boy is, you know, just... I, I don't want to call him evil, because he's just one of those kids who is you know, wild, that, not, not, not really wild either, it's one of those kids that might 
end up being a serial killer if they if they're allowed to get away with the stuff that that they are doing when they're younger if they don't find help or if they don't end up in some kind of care uh, care facility uh, to where that they can you know try and take that animosity and direct it somewhere else uh, but Koontz really really made me believe in these two characters especially since I was more like one of the characters while I was growing up I'm pretty much I was pretty much this the spitting emotional image of, of this one character. Um, I am purposefully trying to to keep the names out of this which one is which because I, I want you to be able to read the book. This is one that I highly recommend. It's on my top 10 Dean Koontz books. It's one I highly recommend. I you need to go out you need to get it. If you're going to read a Dean Koontz book, this is one of the books that I suggest that you read. But uh, have you read The Voice in the Night? Let me know down there in the comments below. I don't mind you disagreeing with my opinion as long as you're respectful. But if you do dislike the book, let me know why you dislike the book. Go into detail. Don't just put, ah, this book sucks. See? Also, if you like the book, tell me what you liked about it. Let's have a conversation down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Retro Book Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. And for you uh, OGs that actually watch the end of these videos and watch the entire video, I want to ask you guys if you were getting tired of the Dean Koontz reviews yet. Um, because I don't want this to turn into a Dean Koontz channel, but I'm also trying to get caught up. So if you'd like me to do something else for the next couple weeks, let me know down there in the comments below. Bye!